Hey folks, Mr. Justin here with Secret Weapon Miniatures and the fourth uh, Workbench Wednesday. <coughs> Excuse me, today uh, I actually happen to be both sick and tired, uh, dealing with a bit of a chest cold, almost didn't do the broadcast. Medicine seems to be working for the most part, I'm coughing less. <coughs> so here's hoping that holds. Let me get the mic on. And uh, yeah, let's get started. What am I doing today? Uh, first, what I'm doing today is taking these two uh, M4, A4 Sherman tanks from Trenchworks and painting them up. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to do a little additional detailing to them. Uh, first on, uh, well, you can see on this one, they're great kits, by the way. Trenchwork does, uh, Trenchworks does a really good job uh, on their kits. I think they're lovely um, resin tanks. The quality of the cast is fantastic. Uh, the detail is very good. All right, then you can see how they added some of the uh, reinforced panels in the sides here, which is great. Uh, a little more interesting than you normally see. Uh, for this one, uh, I intend to attach some logs to it. So I'm actually going to make a couple of logs. Um, and on this one, I'm actually going to uh, add some brass up armor on the sides. And so you can see I've had to sand those panels down. And that's what we're going to do. So let's get started. Audio okay this week, too? Have we uh, finally uh, got all this uh, sorted out and uh, working? <laughs> All right, so the first thing I've got here is my brass sheet. And an enamel paint pen so that I can actually draw on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually just taking the uh, Sherman at this point, uh, finding a spot. I think this spot is, yeah, I can use that. That's perfect. So I am going to align my sheet right here. Set that in place, make sure I'm still aligned. I wasn't, of course, but I am now. And outline this little line here. And that should be all I need. Just make that a little longer. So you can see I've got my enamel line here, my ruler. And I'm going to start by drawing that line and making people uncomfortable uh, by using scissors. I actually use these scissors pretty much exclusively for uh, brass and plastic cards. So. I had some proper brass shears, but I actually didn't find that they cut as well as this. my brass scrap and let's uh, take a gander here at how how that worked so far all right pretty good you can see we are on the right trail so I'm checking to see how it sits here all right and now I'm going to line it up here instead Just like that. And again with my enamel pen. Oop. These are incidentally about the only things I think that Gundam markers are good for. Indiana, welcome wild platypus. Thanks for joining us today. I didn't do my usual introduction there, did I? All right, so, so far, here's what I've got. Let's give that a shot. Boom. Works nicely. So I'll take that. My other sheet of brass here. Or back to my sheet of brass here. And I will lay this right up against the edge of the, where I cut earlier, get my enamel pen again, 
Oh, hey, and a shout out to Happy Sapuku then. That's great, man. Good to see you again. Thanks for joining us. All right. We have our, uh, and hello, Liberty. Thanks for joining us this week. Super appreciate it. I'm going to cut off that sharp edge at both ends. That'd be the dog freaking out about a parcel. And Heather O'Neill, hello, hello. Welcome back. Nice to see you again. All right, so here are my brass up upper panels. Now I could have done this in uh, plastic or whatnot and that would have been fine. Um, I'm actually going to ding these up a bit. Uh, and so I did not. Uh, now I need my brass brush. Just to score these a bit, make them a little rough on both sides. They'll look better when they're painted that way and it'll help the cyanoacrylate stick to them. Remember that your glue does not like to stick to very smooth surfaces. Now at some point I will need to take a couple of breaks to uh, go out and hit these with uh, some enamel varnish and primer. Um, I could use uh, airbrush primer but I prefer not to. Um, I live in uh, California and I have uh, ventilation in my garage. Uh, which means I'm very spoiled and can use uh, enamel rattle cans uh, year-round. Uh, if you don't, I know my uh, good friend, uh, Matthew Fontaine, lives in the uh, back end of Quebec, and uh, uh, he swears by the Badger Stylings uh, airbrush primer. Um, it's fine, I use it at conventions, uh, but given that I can use rattle cans and enamel year-round, that's what I prefer to do. Uh, it's more durable, it gives me a, a nice coat, um, and because so many of the products that I use actually have um, well, a petroleum product in it, uh, I like to have my uh, uh, base layer as durable as possible. <laughs> All right, so here are these. And that is about ready to apply. But before I do that, of course, we've got to make this a little interesting. Where's my paint pen? And there you go. Brian likes it too. So I am going to put a little dot here. here and hmm, where do I want the other one? I'll explain in a second. There we go. I'll do four on each side and again I'll explain in just a minute. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is add some of these wonderful little features uh, from Grantline. These are 148 flat washers. Aren't those great? And you can get these at uh, train stores and such. Most hobby stores don't carry them, but I swear when we open our retail front, we will. That and all the uh, evergreen plastic stuff, it'll be great. So I'm just going to pop these off. Boop. Boop. I'm going to lose that one. Oh, no, I got it. three and four tweezers glue now here's a fun trick for you um, if you haven't seen this before it's something I actually do uh, a lot I will put some glue on a surface and actually dip pieces into it so I can take my tweezers here go dip dip and kerbonk I got a little too much glue there, so I'm very carefully going to hit that with a Q-tip right here. Around it, you don't want to uh, get right on the piece. You run the risk of uh, sticking to it at that point. Oh, I think I just attached one of those to my palm and lost it. That's fine, I've got a whole other pack. Now this one, I cut too much of the uh, little nubbin on the end. Uh, with the way they come, let's open another pack. 
and you can see little rods between them. All right, this one's good to go. Just a dab, put that right there. And where was the other one? That's the one that needs to be recut, so I'm just gonna cut a new one. Up. Two, three, oops, that one may not be useful. Four, five, six. Now I'm not too worried about making sure they're square on here. I like to imagine they could move when these guys did it. It's not like they had to align their bolts straight. There was no, or their plates straight. There's no reason for that. But if you care, you can always, uh... hey, huh, didn't lose it. Oh, now I did. Ha ha. All right, next one. And do I have one more? What about that one? Yeah, I thought that one broke. With these little fiddly pieces, uh, if you're buying them from Grantline or wherever, uh, I really recommend getting more than you think you're ever gonna need. Um, because you will lose them, you will break them and whatnot. And I am working on a Trenchworks Sherman M4A4. These are the tanks. Uh, these are going to uh, charity. I believe they'll be auctioned off as part of an army. All right, so here are my brass sheets at this point, and you can see, let me focus that for you. Now you can see those little plates in there, the little washer plates. And again, one of the advantages to doing this in brass is that I'll be able to bend it in a way that it's more difficult with plastic uh, to make it uh, look as realistic so I can actually ding these up a bit. Um, I'm going to do that in a few minutes because I will need to take that out and prime them first. So before I do that, let's start talking about logs. What do we need for logs? We need straws. No, really. And of course, they're always nice for little accordion elbow bends and whatnot, but that's not what we're doing today. Not using these to make pipes. I'm gonna cut these somewhat unevenly too. All right, so I have four sections of straw. First, I'm gonna make sure they'll even fit on the Sherman. <laughs> they're not too long. Doesn't do me any good if they're too long. So I'm, my goal is to put one or two on each side, maybe two on one, one on the other, I don't know. So I'll have the logs on here like this, the anti-ditching beams or reinforcement, whatever you decide that uh, they are for you. I'm gonna shorten this one a bit. I also made it angled, I don't want angled. I do not want angled cuts. So the other thing I'm going to need <coughs> is the paper. And I'm going to start tearing up paper. I literally just took some paper out of the trash can. Fill a Starbucks cup here full it with it. Just little shreds. You can see. A bit like really rough paper mache in a minute. Nice little pieces. You don't want them too big. A bit of variation is good too. 
Oh, excuse me. I took the pseudoephedrine to let me breathe and stop the coughing, but it's definitely making me twitchy. Leaves me all messed up. Throw in my daily dose of caffeine, and uh, yeah, it's very exciting. All right, do I have enough paper? I don't have enough paper. Welcome to the two hours of watching Justin Shred Paper Show. No, I'm just kidding. I'll stop in a minute, regardless of how close I am. So we're only going to do two of the logs with the paper anyway. All right. So there we go. I have paper. I'm actually going to transfer that from one cup to another cup because I need to add paint to this. And here is where it gets fun. Uh, this is Distress Crackle Paint. Uh, I pick it up at Michael's. It's inexpensive. We'll say that. Um, doesn't really matter what it is. Uh, this one comes with a handy dandy applicator. Um, and a mess. Let's get rid of that. And what I'm going to do is take one of my large brushes. This one here. Doesn't matter. Put it into my crackle medium. Scrape it into my bowl. It's thick stuff not thin paint. Add a little water. Right, my water's over here today. So I've got some crackle medium and I've got some paint. And I have plenty of other crackle mediums. Lots of options here. So I'm just stirring this up, making a paste. Like I said, it's a lot like paper mache, right? Okay. I'm going to want more uh, paper than that, so I'm going to Shred up a little more paper. That's definitely not enough. Now I could just walk over to my nice crosscut shredder right over there, but again, those would be even pieces, and I don't want that. And the wild plasma, did you uh, catch the uh, tanks when I named them? I'll have it in the description after the show, too, of course. For whatever reason, the broadcast system I'm using will let me put in all the information for this episode, but it still posts the last episode for you guys. All right. I've got paper. I've got water. I've got crackle medium. I've got a brush. These pieces are still a little big for what I'm doing right here on this particular model, uh, but they'll do. So I'm just going to start taking paper and with my fingers, wrap it around my straw. In fact, I'll just ditch the brush here. And this will give me some bark simulate and I can actually rip up these papers later to create even more texture. The crackle medium helps by adding small crackles to look more like the uh, bark. And it helps fill in any gaps where I miss the paper. Ah, good, I'm glad you caught me. Yeah, it's funny, I'm shaking so bad from the uh, pseudoephedrine that it's actually difficult to do this. Like I said, all messed up but at least I can breathe, right? What I'll do later, because I'm going to need to let these dry first, so we may not get to see them finished today. We'll, we'll see how it goes and how long it takes. Um, but what I'll do uh, at the end of this is roll a bit of paper and stuff it in the end. Uh, to get that, uh, you know, broken tree look that we want. I'm going to separate some of these papers. Probably should have put on gloves, too. Would have been easier than having to get up and go wash my hands, wouldn't it?
Yep, now it's all coming off on me because I got my hands on the parts that I'd already finished. I want to avoid that. Do it in sections. I'm trying too hard to hurry today because I've got an audience. And I don't want you guys to get impatient, so I'm going to slow down, set this one aside, and start the other one. In fact, I'm going to start this one over because I'm really not happy with it. Largely because, yeah, I just can't stop shaking this morning. Stupid medicine. Like I said, at least it lets me breathe. Otherwise, I'd be really grumpy. This paper off my desk, too. Look at that. There we go. Boom. Ch -ch 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 -ch. There we go. I'm going to set this one on one of my alligator clips over here, uh, just from the bottom. Boop. Ain't it cute? And I can start the next one. There we go. A little bit of coating and start. Little bits, little bits. And again, I'm going to distress this later. I'm actually going to go ahead and put some paper right on the end of this one now, though. Well, I appreciate your uh, suggestion that I don't rush for you, but uh, sometimes it's tricky for me. Like I said, especially when I'm all messed up like this, I'm, uh, my body definitely wants to uh, go, 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 even though I'm sick. Because, hey, medicine, man, sometimes it really works. And there's no doubting it when you take pseudoephedrine that you're like, yep, they used to make meth out of this. <laughs> All right, so I'm letting that one dry. I'm going to uh, rinse my hands real quick. Get that microphone off back on. God, I was wearing and allowed to go flying. Alright. Towel. Set this aside for a minute. Clean up a few of these, put them in there because I'm going to need them in a bit. Alright, and let's talk about the easier uh, but less exciting version of this. And that. If you haven't already guessed, it just involves doing this. Onto a stick. Kerbonk. Now the challenge here is you can't really distress it. And I like having distressed bark. You can do this and then add some paper too, of course. Pretty much the same as doing it the other way though. I 
and I can just glom some of this into the bottom this time. Give me those nice big crackles on the end. And that's it. So I have this covered in crackle medium. Um, and believe it or not, it can make a very fine tree. But those are going to take more than the one setting. Oh good, and they all just fell down and went behind my desk. That's fine. That's fine. It's also why we're taking the carpet out of the studio as part of our remodel. <laughs> all right. So by now the brass is thoroughly dry. Let me toss this brush in my cleaner over there. Bonk. Yep, I can see a little bit of the filming around the glue, which means we are good to go. So I'm going to deck out for just a minute. I need to uh, hit these with um, some enamel primer and come right back for you. So I'm going to put this on standby. Don't go away. And I am back. Thank you for your uh, patience, or at least for waiting, even if you weren't patient. So I have gone ahead and uh, primed these. Uh, just a quick coat of the um, uh, Citadel White Primer. Um, I get asked all the time what my favorite primer is. There's your answer. Uh, I've got literally cases of the Games Workshop uh, sprays out in the garage. Uh, but I did a video on why I talk about uh, spray cans at length. Um, and for me, the big reason is they're uh, not, they've got an extra fine misting cap that I can get right out of the store without having to order them online or anything like that when I want to swap them out. So, I'm a plating cyanoacrylate. All right, first off, deciding on my armor plate. What am I going to do? Uh, let me bend it. I want some real there. Now 
it's a little distressed. I will glue that in place. I have plans to eventually do a weekend long Sherman workshop where we'll actually build one of the uh, Tamiya 148 Shermans. Um, up detail that because it's a very simple kit. Tamiya makes good simple kits. Great for practicing your detailing. That needs to be flat. Alright, so there's the first bit of up armor. You can see a little ding at the back at least. This one, what do I want to do? 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 Well, certainly a little fold. Up armor is complete. So we've got those on here. And I can start painting this one. Logs are still going to need a good deal of time to dry, of course. Crackle medium is not known for being quick. Painting time! It's bingy time, children. Still got a bit of a mess here. Alright. Airbrush is on. Hey, put out the microphone. So let me grab, uh, no shock to anyone that uh, knows me, I'm grabbing my Dollar Rounding inks here. Sap green? I don't want sap green. I want olive green. Where's my olive green? Antelope brown. That doesn't help. Oh, I know where my olive green is. It's in my teaching kit since uh, the last time I taught. I usually use Sherman's for teaching, so it's actually in my teaching kit. All right, so we're going to have to improvise a bit. Actually, I don't have to use the inks. I can pull out some Tamiya green. may already be out. It is. Look at that. How delightful. I have some, uh, let me make myself more jittery real quick. Give myself some Tamiya Olive Drab here. I can actually paint both vehicles at this point because the other one uh, just needs its logs added afterwards. I'm going to probably need more paint than that. Where'd that go? some other color to that later. For now, I'm going to do my base coat. I'll do the modulation as highlights instead of shading. Paint is actually a bit thin, so I'm doing this in very thin coats. It's a bit watery. I don't want to spend my time chasing after thickening it up or trying to get it thicker, so I'll just treat this gently. And I will pause because we are losing one of our clippy widgets.
All right, so I'm going to leave that alone for a minute. And we'll focus on this guy. Liberty, hey, thanks for stopping by. Hope we will catch you next week, too. Enjoy, and in the interim, happy hobbying. Remember to paint, paint, paint every day. Practice your painting every day. Just 20 or 30 minutes every day will make all the difference in the world for you. Don't have to finish models, just practice. Those of you that are practicing your airbrushing, uh, remember my advice to go out and get a large format coloring book too. Those are great. Goodness knows I've painted a lot of Hello Kitty pages. One of my classes I made everybody do, uh, I think it was uh, Frozen, because Frozen was on sale at the time. Whatever large format coloring book I can get. Just help me practice staying in the lines. Getting all my fine brush control down pat. Good start. this guy for a minute. Glue should be good. Of course, if you think those uh, side panels are going to be green when I'm finished, you are much mistaken. Of course they'll be rusty. Big rusty uh, panels on the side. Yeah, airbrushing and coloring book. It's how I got a lot of my practice, particularly for fine line detailing work, uh, because I really had to practice uh, coloring inside of the lines. I also used it to practice um, making improvised masks because you can take things like, oh, business cards, whatever, fold them, round them, however you need to hold them in place, hold it with one hand to mask off an edge, spray, boom, you're good to go. I'm going to do some of that today too. To be fair, I do a lot of that. And one of these drawers has nothing but business cards in it. Although that one might actually be out in the garage right now. Largely because our remodel of the studio is dragging on. We've got uh, cabinets ready to order. In the interim, everything has got to come out, and it hasn't yet because we're not actually ready to get the cabinets in here. but enough has that I keep having trouble finding my stuff. This time I do this correctly. is also that opportunity for me to say if you don't have an airbrush go get one they're valuable tools not just for base coating i always hear people say oh well base coating this i don't need a base coat with an airbrush i can base coat with a rattle can yes you can you can also detail with an airbrush which you can't do from a rattle can really well, someone probably can I know I got to surprise uh, Alfonso Giraldes. He was talking about how airbrushes are great for smooth, but you can never make a craggly looking man, for instance. So I showed him my Inuit bust and pointed out that it was entirely airbrushed. And to be fair, although I'm pretty good with an airbrush, anytime I see a proper airbrush art, like on the Badger side or something, man, it blows me away. Yay. One of my logs just volunteered. Oh, off. How are we doing, Log? Well, you're still very wet. I know, because I just stuck my hands in it, like a silly person. All right. You go away. Which one's dry? You are the driest. So we'll start here. 
Boop 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 boop. Mm, flesh might work. Really like is yellow ochre. Little bit of yellow ochre and voila. Nice green highlight for us. A little color modulation action about to happen here. Uh, where is my, let's see if my drawer of business cards is actually gone. Should be that one. No, you are rocks now. It's because of all the terrain building I'm doing and not all the painting I'm doing right now. I should not be surprised that there's a box of rocks there where my business cards should be. So I am checking my desk for a card. And if not, hey, I can use this. I've got uh, uh, the 135th scale dogs from Industria Mechanica. Comes in a nice product tag. Boom. Now I have a card. All right. Mm, still a little damp. I hate to do it because it makes my paint more fragile. Can't blow dry it, and blow dryer's in the other room. That was one of the first things to go. I'll need that though. But all right, wet or not, we're gonna go ahead. And I will start by masking off this edge. Uh, I want it to be lighter here, so I'm actually going to Start from that front edge, modulate it back just a bit. Mask off that front corner here. And here. And a little bit here. And then blend that in just a little bit. Little glaze. Clean off that spot where I got some on the top. Don't want it there. Same deal on this side. Well, airbrushing Gumpla is definitely the way to go. Uh, it's going to give you a smoother coat than you'll ever be able to get with a brush, uh, particularly with all the large flat surfaces that we have on our Gumpla, you know? And I'm going to, so what, when you have a figurine, that one's still wet, and they're both still wet. Uh, the most important part of the figurine is the face. Uh, in the case of um, a vehicle, particularly a military vehicle like this, uh, the gun carriage is the face. That is the most important part. So you uh, generally want to use your modulation and uh, highlighting to draw attention to the turret, and particularly the gun mantle. Uh, of course, if I took the classic, uh, you know, 40k image of the commissar sticking out the top of a, a tank, you know, drive me closer so I can hit him with my sword, uh, in that case, I would definitely highlight everything up to the cupola where the uh, um, commissar was coming out. But I am highlighting in this direction up to that line here. There's actually a flat panel line there. And again, little glaze, blend that in. Come back and check on my other spots. You can see when it dries, it gets a lot darker. And because I'm going to weather this heavily, I need to go lighter. Um, I usually recommend going a couple of shades lighter uh, if you're going to be doing heavy weathering on a model because it will make it darker substantially.
And I can and have done all this with tape. If you guys take the class with me uh, where we do these tanks um, together, uh, you know that uh, I use tape in the class. All right, then highlight some of these panels, hatches, whatnot. Little raised details to serve some highlighting. I'm going to get the uh, engine hatch here a bit just to make it a little lighter because I'm definitely going to weather that. So I've made that nice and light because I really want to do some weathering back there. And same deal here. Only in this case, uh, I've got the big rusty panels on the side, so I'm not as worried about keeping those lines clean. So I'm going to change that highlighting. Should have masked that, oops. To come to this first line, not up to it. Well, I'm gonna need to blend that in a bit anyway, so I'll get a second shot here. And a second shot here. Highlight on that. That. I'm going to make this one much more about the front of the tank. A little bit on the back corners. And coming this direction. There's my glazing in. Gives me a good start. Back to this one for a minute. <laughs> back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Uh, how much attention do you give to the direction of your light when working on highlighting? Do you pick direction or go with light from everywhere kind of idea? Um, it really depends on the piece. Um, that's a very specific question. Uh, with um, It really depends what I'm doing. Um, with a figurine, I'm almost always highlighting up to the face, uh, no matter where the light source would come from. Um, that said, you can certainly create some uh, dramatic effects by deciding that a piece is going to be partially in shadow. So for the tanks, um, I'm almost always simply highlighting up to the gun carriage. I don't think about where the light is coming from. Uh, if I was doing a diorama or display and there was a lamp or something in it, uh, obviously I would consider that in what I was doing. Uh, but when I'm just doing a gaming piece like this, it's really all about simplicity. And getting the highlights to work. This, uh, these highlights don't want to take. So I'm going to add another dash of yellow in there. Make this even brighter and re excuse me and reapply. I need to lighten it up anyway at the end, but uh, this was not how I expected that to go. <laughs> yeah, you can see it's almost uh, completely unhighlighted. It uh, just doesn't want to take today. Maybe, uh, to me, it doesn't play well with uh, highlighting and just does well with uh, appreciating. I don't, I don't use my Tamiya very often, so I'm a little surprised by how it's working today. Actually, change my mind. I want to highlight that right there. Hatches, raise detail. Fuel tanks. 
and a light glaze from the front. Last but not least, get that highlight back in, hopefully. Hopefully that sticks. <laughs> give this guy a shot again. See if the bright color is going to work here. And again, since I'm making this one about the front of the vehicle, in a way I'm not with the other one. Highlighting over here instead of up to it. And again, any raised panels, hatches, detail that I want to emphasize later. They get some color now. And then a bit on the hull and road wheels. That seems to be working. I'll probably come back with some of the straight yellow, uh, very thin, um, just to really get those highlights to pop. But first, it's turret time. So you can see I've got the very bright color there on the turret. Um, I'm going to weather that down, so I want that to be nice and bright. Same thing, I'm coming in through here. I'll make this the one for the uh, uh, up armor. So more emphasis again on the front. Set this down, I'm going to curve off to one side, curve off to the other. So already, you can see we've got good highlights coming towards uh, the turret and the gun carriage in this case. It'll really work for us when we uh, start weathering. And I do feel that some of these highlights need to be brighter. Uh, they are taking now, so I probably won't bother with the straight yellow, but I definitely want a little brighter color. Because again, the weathering is really going to knock that back. So I'll make this substantially brighter than I actually want it to be at the end. Glaze that in a bit. Back to this one. Right, opposite. Mostly so we can show you the difference. I can show you the difference. You can see the difference. You know what I mean. And then... And then... turret. So I'm going to take a look at this uh, turret and uh, see how I want to highlight that. I am actually not sure. Having it here on the top down view is actually pretty cool because I can see the uh, highlights here and how it's coming and you can see how I've created that going this way. Um, so we're going to start of course by drawing some emphasis to the uh, gun barrel. Uh, but I'm going to do that by masking the sides this time, making the center brighter. A little bit on the corners of the gun mantle, but otherwise not much. And I will 
arc this towards the back. And between them, we should have very different emphasis. Oh, looks like I actually repainted that first turret. Ha, that's funny, because this one clearly has no highlighting on it. All right. Well, I'm glad that worked out. thing I'm going to do on this one is mask get back on screen for you paper towel moves mask this panel here for a highlight around it ha helps to have paint Woo. that's why my airbrush is always so messy So I've left that panel dark. A little too bright around it, but we'll weather that down. All right. Now I can take that top-down view, look at two very differently highlighted tanks, add a little more emphasis where I want it. the engine panel on this one because I wanted to do lots of engine weathering on the back. All right, another highlight on the road wheels because they will definitely get weathered. Let me add, Trenchworks also includes uh, rare earth magnets uh, to insert uh, both in the body and the turret. Um, so you actually have uh, a turret that can move um, and easy uh, transportation for your gaming needs. It's, it's really nice. Cleaning out the airbrush <laughs> so you guys have some idea what I'm doing. Give me just a second. cleaning this out later. I'll regret waiting, but uh, I don't want to do it right now. Ooh, great, I opened that. All right, what I do want to do is paint some rust. Of course, this is that moment where I realized that I should have uh, left the uh, armored panels off, uh, rested them up, and then uh, added them later, but uh, you know, whatever. Projects very seldom go the way they should, even when you've done it a bunch of times. All right, time to pull out my bucket. Oh, secret weapon paint. Paint up some rust. I'm going to need tire black later. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I'm going to need dark iron later. 
You look like light mud. I'm gonna need you later. Brown rust. Orange rust. Oh, there are two brown rusts. Old mud I might want later. I might not. Where's rubber highlight? There's rubber highlight. Engine metal. Fresh oil I'm going to need later. Ba -doop -ba -doop -doop -doo. Red rust. Old rust. That's the color I was looking for. And last but not least, do I not have a copy of a bottle of yellow rust in here? Oh my gosh. Well, it's a good thing I've got some yellow ink because. Man, you gotta have yellow rust. Just have to. No, nope. alright. We'll do with what we got and some uh, ink. That'll be great. Where's my up armor piece? Here we go. Up armor piece. Alright. Normally I would take these outside, hit them with enamel varnish, and let it sit for 15 minutes, but uh, I also don't want to do that today. Now remember, no matter how good you are with an airbrush, you cannot get a clean line from a distance. So, I am taping off the rest of the tank. Very gently, I am using uh, painter's tape instead of Tamiya tape, also not recommended. Um, normally when I do this, uh, I'll stick it on my clothes a few times to get some of the tack off. Uh, it's a little less effective for me these days because now we have a dog. And doing that often puts fur on my clothes, or on my tape rather. go. There we go. Alright, masking tape. Yay! Taping it to my table. Yay! Now I could come in here and do this with uh, cards, but I also don't want to do that. It takes a uh, a little more care than I'd like to give right now. I'd like to be able to just create some rust. And hey, Platypus, that reminds me, if you're not already, you should check out uh, um, Iseka Heavy Industries, uh, Cyporian, also known as Emily Lamb, does a uh, or excuse me, Emily Fontana. Emily Whitehouse, gosh. Um, does a great uh, weekly Twitch stream for Gumpla. And she only recently started airbrushing as well. Uh, drawing attention to the engine compartment so you can use uh, rust and engine oil. Yes, exactly. All right, so I'm going to start with my old rust. No shock there. Granted, I just wasted a whole bunch of old rust. Something tells me I can get more. Yeah, airbrush definitely needs to be cleaned now, but that's alright. Worry about that in a bit. Ah, good, you already subscribed to her Twitch. Yeah, she is really great. Yeah, next week we hope to uh, talk dioramas together. Uh, we were originally going to do it this week, but realized we need uh, to do a little extra planning, figure out how to get another table in here, probably, um, and at least one more camera. Intentionally letting that get speckly. Gives me texture for rust. In fact, on the other side, I think I'll do it uh, differently. I think on the other side, I'll brush paint some rust for you. I don't do that often. I 
happen. It might be fun to do, especially since uh, not everyone out there has uh, an airbrush. Just because it's my preferred method. That is too much yellow. That's what I get for using an opaque yellow. Should have remembered that. It's all right. Another dash of uh, orange rust should do this. Should do the job, do the trick. A little orange glaze. It's funny making such a small amount of rust. Normally, of course, when I'm doing rust, it's uh, there's a lot more emphasis. And a little more red rust on here too. I like the texture, but I'm not happy with the uh, color combo. There we go. And of course, I'll hit this with pigment later to really emphasize it. Draw some real attention. But for now, I have to let that dry for a minute. So let's check on our logs. Here's the first one. Let's get that focused for you. So you can see the crackle medium texture on here. Maybe. I should have used a color, I guess. Maybe I'll give it a wash in a second. Now the challenge with doing it this way is that. You're going to have to glue it, um, and that's why I like the paper. Um, you can also put uh, glue on here and then brush over it. I've never had that work for me. Whereas the paper ones are still drying because of the paper. And this one's not very good. Bring down, oh, the other one's the one that fell. All right, well, on the sections that are good, that's bad. Let me pull that off. What I would do at that point, there we go, let's come in and you can actually pick at it a bit. Create your texture that way. Anywhere you see a, a seam, for instance, just peck at it. Little rips here and there. And as you build that up, you'll definitely get more tree bark texture. But I'll have to finish those another time because they will not be ready today. All right. Uh, put autofocus back on. Skadoosh. T turn autofocus back off because I want to show you the rust. So it's still wet. But you can see we got some, we got color and texture out of that. So let's go ahead and remove the tape, see how clean our mask worked, if our mask worked. And voila! I'll use light pigments to really emphasize that. All right, but for the other side, mix things up. Let's do it differently. Oh, looks like I lost one of my uh, panel widgets. Uh, so let's just go ahead and put another one on there. Or my uh, plates. Pliers. 
see if any of that glue in that bin is still dry or wet. Probably not. Nope. It did crystallize though, which is neat. You can actually create some neat effects uh, for ice with cyanoacrylate. Don't ask. I'm not good at them. I've just seen it done. <laughs> I actually only tried it once and my results were not stellar. They weren't horrible, but they weren't stellar. One of these days I'll play with it a bit more. All right, so while that starts to dry, oh, what will I use for a palette today? Hmm. One of my palettes handy? Nope, and nope, and nope. I guess we took my palettes out of here, too. Man. All right. So I'm taking some bits of sponge. Again, this lets me uh, get texture uh, as I apply the paint. Um, still going to do a little masking. Um, am I going to do some masking? Yeah, I'll put a mask across the bottom just, just so I can be a little lazy and work quickly and not worry about getting it all over the road wheels, even though I'm going to mess up the tracks. And for a palette, I'll just use the bottom of a cup. There we go. Start with uh, rust brown on this side. I'm actually just going to go all over this. Because I actually need that layer to be somewhat even. That's going to be the basis for my rust. So I'm just going to spread that out. See if that guy's dry, good. Brush goes in the bin, and then Got my sponge. I'm gonna dab. Oh, too much. I'll blend that out. That's all right. Tap 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 tap. So that's how I'm getting my texture this time is by dabbing with a sponge. You want to avoid uh, brushing it, of course. Looks like I'm gonna need to close my window here in a minute. Someone's doing yard work. Where are all of my painter socks? I know there's a bunch over there. I'll just use a paper towel for the moment. There we go. Making sure I get uh, not too much paint this time. Or too little. <laughs> okay, a little old rust in this corner. No andin? You lost me there. All right. And this time, not too yellow. Blend it in a bit. Clean sponge. Oop, not clean sponge. Where's my clean sponge? There's a clean sponge.
I'm building this up in layers. That's how we keep it interesting. All right. And here, let me uh, ah, yes, from the movie. Right, 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 right. I actually haven't seen the movie. That's why I didn't know. So here is the brush painted rust. Here is our airbrushed rust. And I'll be right back. It sounds like my dog wants to go outside. <laughs> so I'll set that down for a sec, put it on standby, and I promise I'll be right back. And sure enough, my uh, smoochy pooch wanted to go outside, so she's good now. But all right, we've got our uh, rust on this one. So we have those nice rusty panels. All right, and that turret is here. I am actually going to have to uh, go out and uh, spray some uh, enamel varnish on that uh, before I start applying pigments. Um, the window too because the yard works it's always something in it all right whoa knock everything off my desk why not all right roll over my mics wire man everything's just going wrong now so this one um yeah before i do the uh, uh before i hit this with varnish and come back to do pigments and whatnot we still have to do the road wheels and all that on both of them so i'll do that first um but i also want to start on this one uh with the let me get my rust colors out of there where's my bucket man i'm losing track of everything today all right tire black Rubber highlight. We'll need those for the road wheels. Iron is for the guns. Old mud and light dust for spray on weathering. Here it is, fresh oil. Yeah, my dog is very chill. She will bark to let me know she needs to go outside. And actually, this is fresh oil. I would like the old oil if I have one in here. Hey, look at that. First try, too. So these are very much specialty paints. Um, like the rest of the uh, Secret Weapon acrylics, we're not just colorists. We're not just using... Uh, a single base and adding color to it like you'd get at Home Depot or something or from uh, um, some of the other companies out there. Uh, these have different bases. So in the case of both of the oils, they are in clear gloss bases so that they will flow and give you good effect. Now I'm going to add both of those to this. So I'm going to put some fresh oil Well. 
and then rock it one way, rock it the other way. And let that create a natural flow for me. There it goes. And it's going to pull down like that for me. And I can come back afterwards and decide how much of that I want. So see how it's a really thick pool right here? Well, I don't want that. So I'm going to pull that, some of that off just with a brush using subtractive method. Make it more of a streak. Boom. I'm going to need a full-time assistant just to manage the uh, zoom on this bloody thing. There you go. And that'll stay shiny and it'll stay gunky looking and that'll be great. And I'll come back later with some pigment. Of course, of course. And I'm going to do the same on this one. Of course, of course. So fresh oil. And some old oil. The oil oil also has a bit of uh, metallic in it, uh, which makes it nice for actually weathering metals. I'll use it as a shade on my uh, weathered metallics. Oh, there we go. Nice. It's even pooling through here on the rust. And I'll emphasize that later. I like the idea. Awesome too much metallic there for my taste. So I'm going to put a little more fresh oil on top of that. Force it to spread out. Set that on one aside. Come over here. And hey, let's do some road wheels. Any minute now. There we go. Alright, rubber highlight. Entire black. have been for you. Where is like a size zero or one? I don't care what brush you are. You'll do. Remember that the metallic bits here would actually still or the, the, what do you call it? The thing the wheel goes on, the um, rims for these, I guess, um, are metal. So you want to keep them the uh, Sherman green. Justin. I'm not too worried about a little bit of over uh, application onto the hull uh, because I'm going to weather the heck out of that. It'll be covered in mud and whatnot. Now I didn't get the charity page before the broadcast, but so please check back later uh, in the comments and I will add the charity information that this is going to. And of course, I'm not worried at all about getting it on the tracks because the tracks, yeah, they're going to be done differently later. Uh, did I thin that at all? No, no, I mostly don't. This isn't one where I'm looking for any sort of translucency or anything. I'm just taking it out of the pot, putting it on a brush, slapping on some road wheels. I also make people nervous and uncomfortable sometimes 
by uh, taking paint from a pot, putting it directly on a model, and then painting. <laughs> but I do a lot of large models, so it's easy for me to do. It saves a bit of time. If the whole of the road wheel uh, were meant to be tire black, uh, that's exactly what I would have done, in fact, is just put a drop on each road wheel. And hi, Kevin. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate the question very much. Thank you. And of course, without talking about it, chances are good I could have gotten both of these uh, completely finished in two or three hours. They're nice small pieces with lots of straight flat sides, makes it easy. did once get through uh, 10 Lehman Russ in a day. That was fun. One of those Emperor Fist tank companies picked that up and boom, knocked that out. I have an armored company that's like 15, 20 miles deep at this point. I just need to go ahead and make a list for it and then miraculously find time to start playing again. That would be great. with that one, this dirt goes with this one, all the road wheels are done. So let's take a look at what we've got so far. This is the one with the uh, brass up armor, and again with the autofocus off, a little better light, there you go, we can see the rusty bent up armor, the shiny oil effects, and rusty up armor on this side, and our road wheels. At this point, we're actually very nearly finished. On the other one, that's eventually going to get its logs. Uh, the highlighting scheme is very different. because there will be less pigment weathering and enamel weathering on this one and more on this one. All right, next up, let's do some tracks. That would be over here. Nope, that's old oil. Dark iron, there we go. I don't know, my son is uh, dragging me into Pokemon. He uh, started getting an allowance recently and spent his first uh, chunk of change on the Sun and Moon trainer deck. Now, Emily is uh, going to bring over a deck so I can play too. Apparently now I'm going to be playing Pokemon. That's what I get for having a kid. <laughs> All right. Let me find uh, my brush again. Well, let me find a bigger brush. I'm just gonna leave these over here so they're easy to get to. And I am taking the dark iron and I'm going to do a couple of things with it. One, paint the gun. I love this color so much. So happy when I saw the sample. Long before we launched. Now I can't wait to get into the warehouse as soon as it's uh, set up, uh, as soon as the lab is set up, and uh, get to work on the uh, mech paint line. It's actually uh, sitting there ready to uh, process and bottle and all that. I just, I need time. We also need to, uh, since we just finished getting the warehouse reorganized after the last Kickstarter, um, we also need to get the uh, electrician in to uh, run 220 over to where the uh, lab is going to be. And then I'll be making paint all the time. It's going to be great. All right. Dash of water. Too much water. 
So now I'm thinning it a bit because I want it to go into the uh, recesses of the tracks more easily. And that is simple. Just brush is the right size for this. Normally when I work on a Sherman, of course, the tracks are separate. Makes them a little easier to work with. Particularly when you can get the road wheels and everything off of a, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, off of the hull. Really get in there to weather it, then put everything on. And yeah, we are making our own paint now. We. Uh, had someone else manufacturing that for us, but it's uh, created a burden for them uh, and delays for us. Uh, so we've planned to uh, bring the lab in-house for quite some time. Uh, all the equipment is actually uh, sitting in the warehouse right now. Um, just waiting for me to, like I said, waiting for the electrician to get in and give me power. Um, all the materials are there and the uh, uh, first 30 gallons for, well, that's interesting, uh, the mech line are actually, like I said, just sitting there waiting to be processed and bottled. So we got them formulated and ready, just haven't had a chance to finish the process. I'd hoped to do it this summer, but uh, the Kickstarter took up the whole warehouse. We underestimated the uh, volume. When they gave us the uh, freight density information, we thought, ah, good, no problem, we've got plenty of room for this. And we were wrong. We were so wrong. Right, there's tracks in the back. Good enough for the moment. I wish I'd done it to the other one first, because this is the one I'm actually going to finish, I think, for this broadcast. I would have actually skipped the other. So I'm now just going to focus on this one, because we are running out of our day. Out of broadcast time here. And I'd go a little late, but I actually have to get to the bank today. Wire money to the uh, Australian company that helped with our uh, Kickstarter fulfillment. They got all of their Tablescapes realms out the door, and now they'd like to get paid. Seems fair. Unfortunately, they like to be wired, and we don't do enough wiring to bother with the service, which means I get to go in. And no worries about me having to uh, get out of the paint lab to do the series. This is my favorite part of the job, always has been. Uh, the only thing that would make it better is uh, more Q&A. Uh, my favorite part uh, about this is when uh, I'm doing a uh, broadcast that specifically addresses uh, audience questions. So remember, if anyone out there has something they want to see me work on or do or a technique you'd like to see demonstrated, please let me know. I will be more than happy to make you a video. This was originally the Ask Mr. Justin segment. Since I had a hard time getting questions, I went ahead and changed that. Now, when I'd been doing this regularly, getting questions was easy. So hopefully, as we uh, get back into the routine here, we'll see a lot more Q&A and videos specifically for customer requests. Audience requests. I guess you don't have to be a customer of Secret Weapon in order to uh, tune in and ask questions. I'm certainly not going to uh, be checking in everybody. <laughs> uh, do I plan to do any videos on paint theory and production? Um, not a lot. I mean, um, I can talk about some of that. 
uh, but I'm not going to go into great detail. Um, or at least I don't plan to at the moment. We'll see how uh, things play out. All right. So we have the uh, basic painting done. And it's already looking pretty darn sharp, if I say so, myself. And I do. Uh, but this is that part where I absolutely have to hit it with uh, some varnish. So I will be right back, and I will feel silly for uh, doing the uh, oil effect, because I'm going to have to reapply that if I want some gloss. In the interim. That is the one downside, I think, to the uh, live broadcast, is that it's uh, so much of what I do, uh, I like to apply uh, the enamel varnish. Um, it means that when we do the videos, we've got to wait for it to dry. That's no fun. So let me reapply my oil effect real quick. I shall do that last. Let me get the pigments on there. So we've got the chance to talk about uh, what we're doing. All right, so I used a matte varnish. Um, if I'd used a satin or gloss, uh, I would take um, uh, some enamel paint, uh, thin it down and put it into the recesses. Uh, but I didn't do that, so I am looking for... Ah, these pens are still in a drawer. My Micron pens. So I use a lot of pencil, I use a lot of pen uh, when I'm working. The Okay, not that one. Second drawer is actually right behind the camera. So I'm just going to do a bit of panel lining for emphasis. This is a half millimeter pen. I'm using it just to add some definition to these rear panels. I 
And again, I can do this with oils or enamels or pens, pencils. I have a whole slew of colored pencils within reach too. That's actually how I do my edge highlighting, and I'll do that in just a minute. The other thing I can use, uh, if I have mine handy, and I do, oh, wait, no, you're not it. You're not my technical pencil. You're my technical pencil. The other thing you can use is a uh, third of a millimeter uh, pencil. And get your lines that way as well. But I still prefer my pen, most of the time. Nice and visible, see? Adds easy emphasis. Ba -doop -ba -doop -doop -doop. Anything else I want to outline? Yes. I'm actually going to put a little bit right around the front here. Uh, to help separate the turret housing. All right. And on the turret, around that, around this. And yes, Charles, you should totally set an alarm for Workbench Wednesday. You don't want to miss this. All right, let me get my pencils here. My white pencil has been stolen by my son and lost. So I'm going to try using a yellow pencil uh, for my edge highlights today. Boom. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Hopefully anybody watching that does edge highlights with a paintbrush will never do that again. And if it gets a little heavy, you can uh, burnish it in with your fingers. You don't have to uh, suffer through bad highlights. After I came in with the pen, I'm now coming over the top of those panels, my highlighter. What kind of pencil? Uh, watercolor pencils are what I use. Um, it makes it uh, possible for me to uh, burnish them in, make it translucent, uh, which is why I typically just use my white pencil. Um, and it's the only one that's missing, of course. Uh, but yeah, I typically just use my white pencil and uh, burnish it in a bit, and I get that nice translucent white highlight. <coughs> Excuse me. 
There's that cough coming back. <coughs> Sorry about that, folks. Um, but yeah, I'll take my white pencil and burnish it in a bit. And it doesn't look white when it's finished because it pulls the color in around it and it's somewhat translucent, so it pulls the color in from underneath it as well. Ain't that grand. Now you can pick up a whole set uh, at art stores and whatnot. Um, I actually just recommend picking up a nice like Prismacolor watercolor white, you know. Uh, it's, it's the color you're going to use most often. When I use my colored pens, pencils, um, it's normally for uh, weathering. It's something that I used to use for weathering because uh, I could, you know, kind of draw scratches and blend them in. And, uh, but I don't really use that technique anymore. Um, I find I get better results with other materials. And you can see I've got that nice. Here, I'll even make it really heavy on purpose, right there. Right, boom, so much yellow. Not so much yellow. Works just fine, and you can see all those edge highlights. Really working. Let's get in on this one. on the turret. Mm, where I will scrape down to some metal apparently. I can fix that later. But now I get that nice clear highlighting on the edges of the gun cowl, gun shield, whatever. That's all translating for you on the camera there. It looks good on my screen, but uh, hopefully you guys get it too in YouTube land. Rather than edge highlight on a couple of these, I'm actually just using it to uh, highlight the uh, flat surface. Let's burnish it in a bit. emphasis right here. So I'm actually just drawing that line there and it does not look good. But now it does. Burnish it a bit more right here. Boom. Nice little transitioning line right there. And all I had to do was hit it with a pencil, draw the line, boom, good to go. Yeah, definitely different medias uh, and mediums for um, working on my models. Uh, I know at one point on a forum I got grief for it. Um, somebody said, oh, this is miniature painting, not miniature drawing. <laughs> I'm like, well, I have a tool in my toolbox. It does a good job at this specific task. I need to do that task a lot. Quit your whining. Otherwise, we'd have to give grief for uh, decals and everything else, too. And that would just be silly. Although I do often paint over my decals. <sighs> my freehand skills are uh, a little lacking these days. So I can put down the decal and paint right over it. So there's that difference between the uh, highlighted pieces here. Very visible from this angle. You can see all that clear edge highlighting. Nice and visible, especially like right here. So it's not blending in as much. Now, for our last few minutes, I have to do something incredibly important. It's 
finish some rust. Pencil goes in the box. Boop. Pigments come out. Pigments are stuck. Why are pigments stuck? All right, there we go. <coughs> Sorry about that. Cups. Palette knife. Any of my palette knives. Anybody? Anybody? Palette knife? Palette knife? Hey, look, a spoon. That'll do. All right. What do we got? Dark yellow. Perfect. I want some uh, violet. Perfect. I want some. Well, I want some sewage muck today. I want to make some different kind of rust on here. And you should be terracotta, rust brown, rust orange. There you are. All right. Lots of ways to do this. I'll do it differently on each side. But I will start with some violet. Another reason I like the uh, enamel varnish here is remember that, uh, uh, in fact, that's today's grumpy modeler tip, is nothing strips models better than isopropyl. So this is a bottle of 99% isopropyl. I'm adding it to my pigment to make a pigment wash, which means that I am now adding something caustic to my model. It works just fine. Don't brush. You do not want to use a brush to apply. And I don't want to brush that big. I want to brush this big. Also remember whatever brush you're using, you're dipping it in isopropyl, so certainly don't go using your good sable brushes or something. Pigment's a little heavy, that's all right. You'll note, I hope, that I am emphasizing uh, my rust paint job and not trying to uh, replace it. You really want to use your pigments for emphasis most of the time. They're not a good substitute for basic color. Orange. Dark yellow than the rest because I'm actually going to use that dark yellow on the uh, upper body. Hold off on my blues and greens for the moment. All right. Yeah, I'm not sure when I first started using a pencil for highlights, um, but at this point, I don't remember not doing it. A little dark yellow pigment for emphasis on a few of these spots. A little too much. Dry off your brush. Come back. I'm actually going to thin that a bit more, believe it or not. And I'm actually going over some of those spots with my violet as well, of course. The Isopropyl will pull up some of the paint around it, as well as some of the pigment beneath it, and allow me to kind of sort of blend them together. And that's what I like. So I've got a little pool right there, that's intentional. I'm going to go boop, 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 pull out some spots. It'll make it look a little more like a watery spotty, if that makes sense. And while that dries, I'm actually coming up here to the hull. And in a few select spots, adding a bit of dust. Let 
make it nice and dusty. Because of course when that dries, it'll look like dirt. And that will be splendid. Back to this side. So that's had a minute to dry. And the washes do need a couple minutes to dry. Uh, and you really want to let that happen before you um, apply more of it, uh, only because uh, when it's wet, it's hard to see. And it's very easy to over apply uh, pigments um, in general. A little red. Another nice uh, trick, uh, trick, trick with rust is uh, uh, getting some of those layers to overlap. Uh, makes it look a little more realistic in terms of the uh, water damage and whatnot. I'm back here. I'll just use my. I don't have my blow dryer handy, and you can see very quickly how the pigment changes just as it starts to dry. ready to wrap, uh, wrap up this week but first let me get these out of the way because of course I'm gonna keep going uh, and show you guys uh, what we got all right so here is the Sherman with its dusty front you can see that nice dust layers in here. Then I'll go back and I can add some more. Same back here. Looks nice and dusty. Here's our Simply Painted Rust. And here is the Emphasized Rust with all of the pigment washes on it. You can see that nice you know, yellow-red transition right here in the bend. A little bit of spotting up in here. And yeah, you can see with just a simple application of some pigment, it starts to look, well, very different. Uh, acrylic rust is, is fine. It works uh, just beautifully. Um, goodness knows I do a lot of my rust with just the acrylic and never hit it with pigments or oils or enamels or anything else. Uh, but once you do, I mean, the difference really is just remarkable uh, on the effects you can get, and particularly since it dries looking dry in a way that uh, acrylic paint simply doesn't. So there we are. I mean, at this point, uh, I would not feel bad gaming with this. And that's two of them nearly finished in two hours, despite the breaks and talking and uh, having to look for things and everything else. Um, so definitely stay tuned. I'll get the uh, charity information into the comments uh, on this video. Uh, in the interim, thank you for tuning in this week. I really appreciate it. I know you guys have a lot of ways to spend your time and I'm glad you're here with me. Please tune in next week and come prepared to have fun and ask questions. Happy hobbying.